Church on this special Grandparents Weekend. Can we just take a moment here and honor the grandparents that are with us? Yes. We're so grateful that you're joining us. And before we begin worship, I would love to pray for us. So if you're able, will you stand? And we'll just take a moment in the presence of the Lord before we begin. Father, thank you that we have a house, Lord, where your spirit dwells. Thank you that we can come and gather, Lord, in joy to worship you this morning. We're so grateful that we get to celebrate our grandparents, and Lord, we're so grateful that we get to celebrate you. So we want to bring you honor. We want to bring you glory this morning. It's in Jesus' name we all pray. We all say amen. Let's worship together.
Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. It says, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We worship a God who lavishes us in unfailing love, who washes us in his mercy and his grace by the blood of Jesus. And not because of anything that we done that we have done, but it's because it's his character, it's who he is. In his goodness, he is so faithful to us. Even when we are faithless, he is faithful. Amen. 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 Let's continue to fill the room with our gratitude and our song to him.
Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for your faithfulness. Where would we be without your mercies that are new every morning? God, we thank you that you sent your son Jesus to pay the price that we could not pay for our sins. What love, what grace, Lord. Thank you for being who you are to us. So God, today we want to continue to worship you through our song and through the message. Would you be glorified in everything that we do? We love you so much, Lord. Again, it's in Jesus' powerful name we all pray. We stay together. Amen. Let's give him praise one more time. And you may be seated as we continue on with our announcements. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to South Bay Community Church. My name is Dave. Uh, I loved singing that song, Great Is Thy Faithfulness. That was one of my favorite worship songs. I know it was one of my mom's favorite worship songs growing up. And, you know, one of the things I hear is, you know, I love worshiping here in service, but sometimes, like, man, I wish we could worship more. I wish we could just worship for an extended period of time. If that's the boat you're in, we have something we're really excited coming up this Friday evening at 7 p.m. We're having a worship night. It's a night dedicated just wall-to-wall -wall worship. And, uh, you know, we have them uh, every few months here at the church. And I got to say, they're one of the most, I say, one of the most powerful nights that we have, just being able to be in God's presence and sing these songs out. And so, please, guys, don't miss out. Again, that will be this Friday evening at 7 p.m. You know, one of the ministries that I get the chance to help out with is our young adult ministry. This is uh, geared for those roughly in the mid-20s into their 30s. We met just this past Friday evening, and we have something coming up next Sunday. You know, we realize there are a lot of young adults coming to the 11 a.m. service, so it would be great to do something after that service. So at 1 p.m. next week, uh, we're going to have lunch, and we're also going to have a Bible study time. So we get physical food, we get spiritual food. You guys get the chance to hang out meet some of the young adults here at the church uh, we would ask that you guys would register if you're interested in coming out, just because we want to make sure we have enough uh, lunches for you guys. You can do that on our website, southbaycommunitychurch.com. And, you know, we have that young adult ministry this past Friday evening. And, you know, I'm always blown away because it, it never fails that there is somebody who's new to the church, somebody who's found us online or somebody's invited them. And I know that's the case each and every weekend here. Every time we're in that lobby, the pastor said, we meet people who are checking out this church or maybe been attending for a few weeks. And so, you know, if that is or the situation you guys are in, you're wondering, you know, what is South Bay Community Church all about? We have our discovery class. It's a perfect opportunity to come and really get a feel for what this church is all about, a little bit about our history. We share about our ministries and all the ministries we have to offer. So please, if you've been wondering, come out. It'll be this Wednesday night, 7 p.m., right here in the Worship Center. We would ask that you guys would register for that as well so we make sure we have enough materials for you. But it's a great class to get a good feel of what this church is all about. And then, you know, for those of you who uh, just continue to give, thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving here at, at the church. You know, I look around, and it's amazing how this church has grown over the years, the different rooms that we've had, the different additions we've been able to make to be able to accommodate more people. And really, that's because of your guys' faithfulness and giving, just giving to the Lord and allowing us to be able to do ministry in so many different ways. You know, if you're wondering, you know, how do I give? How do I, how do I give my offering? There's four different ways you can do it. We'll have it up here on the screen for you. Um, but one, you can go to our website, southbaycommunitychurch.com slash give. You can give using our app through PushPay. You can mail it in at our address here, 2549 West 190th Street. And if you're here this morning, you're like, hey, I have my offering. Where do I turn it in? We have little boxes right there in the back left uh, as we exit the worship center. We also have it in the lobby as well. Well, one last announcement, and this is something, you know, we, we just kind of want to put on your radar. You know, many of you guys might be watching the news and you hear of the situation that's going on in Afghanistan right now. And, and it's just, it's heartbreaking seeing, you know, all these people suffering and, you know, knowing that some of these refugees are now coming over to the United States. And uh, just this past week, we got word that there's roughly about 12 families that are right here uh, outside LAX. And so we're looking in, our elders, our staff are working on a plan. You know, how can we help these families? How can we bless them? How can we show God's love? How can we invite you guys into that process? So we're still working through the details, but we wanted to put that on your radar. We're hoping next week we'll have a little bit more to share with you guys. But we think this could be just a tremendous uh, ministry opportunity. Uh, show God's love to these families that desperately, desperately need it. So stay tuned uh, for that. Well, I'm not sure if you guys knew, uh, this is the first time we're really doing it here at South Bay Community Church, but this is National Grandparents Day. So big round of applause and thanks to all of our grandparents out there. We are, man, we're just so excited that you guys are here. I know for me, I think of the impact my grandparents had on my life and how much they loved me and cared for me. And I know that is the case for so many of us. So thank you for being here. And we have a, a very special speaker who's going to be sharing the message. His name's uh, Pastor Corey Yoshida. You guys might be familiar with him. He was the senior pastor of Evergreen Baptist Church for over 40 years. And he recently retired in 2019. And 
We were so thankful when, when he and his wife, Rain, decided to call South Lake Community Church their home. And they have been a blessing to our church family, praying for people, ministering to people, all the years of experience and care that they have, pouring that into our church family. And I think he's the perfect person to deliver the message this morning. I got to see it last night, and it's really for all ages, and it was something I really needed to hear, and I left encouraged. And so with all that in mind, please welcome out Pastor Corey. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Let's take a moment and pause and pray, shall we? Lord Jesus, we pray for what's going on in Afghanistan. Lord, uh, there's such misery and suffering go, going on, and Lord, you can just see how sinful humanity is. Father, we lift up a special prayer for all those who know Jesus who are there, who are being persecuted and even martyred. Lord, we ask in the precious name of Jesus that you will provide for them strength and comfort and Lord, we pray for a means of escape for them. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we pray that, that you are a God that's in every corner, in every facet of this world, and in everyone's life, one way or another. And so, Father, we make this appeal to you as your church family here in the South Bay. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'd like to bring my uh, warm greetings to those of you who are present here in the worship center. Those of you who are outside under the tent and for all who are at home worshiping with us. And a special uh, thank you for uh, all the guests we have here who happen to be grandparents. That you were invited here by perhaps your grandchildren or perhaps your children. And we're just so delighted to have you with us with, with, regardless of what venue you happen to be in at the moment. Now, my wife and I have been coming to South Bay since January of 2019, and then we had that, that period of our break during the pandemic. But this is actually the service we attend. We even have our own chairs. You notice everybody sits in the same seats every week? Yeah, but if you happen to sit in our two seats, uh, have at it. We'll, we're fine. We'll find another place to sit. In fact, my wife's not in that seat right now, so... All right, and then the 11 o'clock service, our, our family is going to be here, and we'll be, I think they're going to all sit on that side where the children's section is. Okay, at the very outset, let me reiterate what Dave already said. This message really is for everyone, even though it's entitled, The Blessings of Growing Old. Uh, let me share with you why it's for everyone. Well, some of us are old, and so this message directly applies to us. Everyone knows someone who is old. So you can take what's in this message and apply it to your life vis-a-vis -vis the person who was elderly in your life. And then everyone is getting older. And Lord willing, someday you will reach the point where this message will apply directly to you. And then maybe it'll be archived. I don't know if they have a 40-year archive, but maybe it'll be archived and you can, you can bring it up again. Now, there was a synopsis of this message given by Clovia Hunt. Here's her picture. She's also on the worship team. She gave a Thursday night devotional on this subject on February 18th of this year. So you can go back and, and get the arch or search the archive and get Clovia's devotional on the subject. Now, in case you haven't noticed, I am old. I am aged. I'm going to use those words interchangeably. And that's part of the reason why I think uh, they allowed me to preach this morning on Grandparents' Day because I am a grandparent and I am elderly. Now, Pastor Gary, every once in a while, jokes about him being old. Is that correct? He'll make reference to it, and it's probably because he's the oldest one on staff. So, in light of that, I, we're going to begin the message with a pop quiz. Now, those of you who are Asian Americans, you're, you're sweating in your palms right now <laughs> because it conjures up memories of when you were in school and they gave, the teacher gave you a pop quiz and you wanted to ace the pop quiz. I know great on this one, but there may be a price you pay depending on how you answer it. All right, question number one. This is a true and false. I love true and false because you have a 50% chance of getting it right. All right, here's a true false question. I am older than Pastor Gary. True or false? Okay, I'll give you a second to think about it. Now, all who think that I am older than Pastor Gary and that statement is true, raise your hand. Okay. Right, very good. 
All those who think Pastor Gary is older than me, no, no, I won't, don't have to raise your hand. Because Pastor Gary may be in the sanctuary, and I don't want him to see your hand up. Second question, what is the age difference between me and Gary? What's the age difference between me and Gary? I'm going to give you an over and under on this one, all right? Um, is, it over, is it over five years? So five years or more, or is it under four or less? All right, all right. Somebody's got, that's pretty close. All right. all right, how many of you think it is uh, five years or more? Raise your hand. Bless you, all right. Now, how many think it's, it's four years and under? Raise your hand. Okay, it is actually five years or more. All right, so I am more than five years older than Gary. Now, age is a very interesting topic, very interesting. Um, let me make a statement about aging that I'd like you to remember. This is the takeaway in some respects from this message. Jesus is greater than aging. So we're in a Jesus is greater than series, but I'm not going to be in Colossians this morning. I'll be in selected verses. But I want you to remember, thematically, we're talking about Jesus being greater than things. Jesus is greater than aging. And if you embrace that, and if you know Jesus, you will age well. Now, here's some interesting thoughts about, about aging. Aging is all about the mind. Mark Twain said this, age is an issue of mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. Mark Twain has some incredible quotes, didn't he? All right. I am not Mark Twain's age. All right. Aging is all about perspective. Sam Ewing, a baseball player, wrote this. Inflation is when you pay $15 for a $10 haircut. You used to get for $5 when you had hair. <laughs> That's aging. Aging is all about advantages. Don't worry about avoiding temptation. As you grow older, it will start avoiding you. All right. And as a male, I really believe that in the whole area of pornography. As I got older, it's just not as much of a temptation. Aging is all about living. Do not regret growing older. It is a privilege denied to many. I try to never complain about me getting old because I'm privileged to be the age that I'm at because some people don't get there. Now, today we'll be looking at three things. The blessing of wearing a crown, the blessing of being renewed daily, and the blessing of being extremely valuable. And again, this is for everyone to take in. First of all, the blessing of wearing a crown. Every aged person, Lord willing, uh, who has a grandchild has a crown. So if you have a grandchild, you have a crown. If you have multiple grandchildren, you have many crowns. Proverbs 16, first portion says this. Proverbs 17, 6, I'm sorry. Grandchildren are the crown of the ages. I love this verse. And it's so true. Grandparents are the crown of the ages. So every grandparent who's worshiping with us today, your grandkids are your crown or your crowns. And for everyone who has a grandparent still living, you are their crown. And really believe that because it's true. Here's a picture of my wife and I with our, all of our children. We have three daughters, their husbands, and our 13 crowns. This was taken in Hawaii when we celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary there in 2019. Now, this picture could only be taken because of the two old people in there. And yes, I did just call my wife old, all right? She doesn't look, she doesn't look her age, all right? Because without us, this family doesn't exist. Now, here's a picture of my wife and I with our 13 grandkids. You can get a little closer look at them. All right, this was taken on Mother's Day of this year. Thir so we have, we're blessed. We have, we have 13 crowns, three of whom were adopted, two from the foster care program. And we have a ministry here for foster care uh, families. Crowns mean one of two things. Crown means the presence of honor of honor. It means the existence of honor because the person has entered a special position 
or a special status. Kings wear a crown because they are in a special position and have this uh, exalted uh, uh, status. Now, I'm a member of the board of trustees at Maranatha High School. And so they've given me a badge to wear whenever I come on campus during regular school hours. This is the picture of my badge. It's a symbol of, I believe it's a symbol of honor of being a trustee. And I do wear this. I try to remember to wear it whenever I go on campus because I have one remaining crown at Maranatha. Her name is Cameron. Uh, She's currently playing volleyball at Maranatha. She's a senior. Now, if you think I'm showing a lot of pictures of my family and my grandkids, you are absolutely correct. And the reason is, I'm a grandparent. Grandparents show pictures of their grandchildren. Before, you could only have a couple because of your wallet. You know, a little picture in a wallet. Now you have a phone, a smartphone. And you can just go through a litany of pictures of your grandkids. And I took these off my cell phone. It is an honor to be a grandparent. A crown also means a reward. A crown means a reward. The Bible speaks of crowns in heaven as a reward for the things done here on earth. So a crown represents both honor and reward. It is an honor to have grandchildren. It is a reward to have grandchildren. So grandchildren, remember this, all the grandchildren present here, no matter what your age is, you are a blessing and a crown to your grandchild, to your grandparent. If you happen to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, share that with your grandparents if they don't know Jesus, because they will listen to you. Grandparent, if you know Jesus and your grandkids don't, pray for them daily and invite them to church. Invite your crowns to come and worship with you or be part of kids' crew if they're younger, where they'll get to learn about Jesus. So for those of us who are aged, we have the blessing of wearing crowns. Secondly, we have the blessing of being renewed daily. The blessing of being renewed daily. Now, I'm going to go share a few of these, the ones that I've experienced for the most part. There are challenges of growing old. There are certain challenges that just happen in life when you're growing old. First of all, there's the challenge of health loss. The challenge of health loss. Have you noticed at your family gatherings, when the older people get together, what do they talk about? Health, medications, you know, doctors. Health becomes an issue. The older we get, we discover aches and pains in places we didn't even know existed in our bodies. There is health loss. See, the Bible says something. And if this was a standalone verse, it would be kind of depressing, but it's not. And we'll get to the second half. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says this, Therefore, we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying. That's not a pleasant picture. But it basically means that as we get older, our physical being begins to break down and wear out. When we get post-65, we understand this all too well. See, we, we kind of feel like, hey, man, we're just slowly decaying or falling apart. And we cannot do the things we used to do. Now, my wife is somewhat of an exception here. Um, She can still ride roller coasters. This is the roller coaster at California Adventure. I think it's called Incredicoaster. It used to be called California Screaming, I think. I don't know what it's called today because I haven't been there in a while. Here's a picture of her with our crowns, Bryn and Brayden. And they call her Silly Grandma. Now, I won't get into that. That's a whole different message maybe I'll get a chance to teach on. Now, because I couldn't go on it, I just, I'm too old to be going on it. I wobble when I get off of it, all right? So I would just stand there while she went on with the grandkids, and sometimes they'll take multiple rides. So I would stand there, and at, at that roller coaster, there's a takeoff point that you can observe. So I went to the takeoff point, and I said, I'm going to count the number of elderly people on this, this roller coaster. And I probably counted like 15 sets of cars, because they went on more than once. You know how many elderly people I saw on that roller coaster? Zero. Or at least I couldn't tell that they were elderly. Right? Zero. We just can't do the things we used to be able to do. Um, like, I can't play basketball with my, uh, with my grandchildren anymore. I, I have a bad knee. In fact, I'm going to get knee replacement surgery on Thanksgiving Eve. 
my, my knee's falling apart or has fallen apart. And um, I can only play horse. And if we don't have time, we play pig. And if we have a lot of time, we play hippopotamus, <laughs> which I can't spell. All right. All right. Um, my wife, one night, three years ago, decided to play basketball with our grandkids. My grandson drove on her, bumped into her when he was, making, when he was going for a layup, and knocked her on the ground, and she broke her pelvis in two places. All right. Now, there's a good side to this. She is now a legend at Huntington Memorial Hospital and at our, our, at our retirement community, Atherton. Why? Word got around that this elderly lady broke her pelvis playing basketball and not falling in the bathroom. <laughs> That's usually where we break bones. Elderly is in the bathroom or kitchen maybe, or taking out the garbage, but she got it playing Basketball, so people from, on staff on, at the hospital would come in and say, oh, you're the lady who played basketball and broke your pelvis, all right? And uh, of course, I consoled my grandson. I said, look, that's okay, accidents happen. Did you make the layup? <laughs> and he said, no. And I tried to hide my disappointment. Then my wife said, no, men are just so different. Because when the guys at the hospital came to her, they would ask her, oh, you're, you, you're the one who broke her pals playing basketball. Did you win? <laughs> she said, men are weird, so forgive us, ladies. We think along the same tangential lines. So there's the challenge of health loss. There's also the challenge of hearing loss, which is a subdivision of health loss. One very common loss among the elderly is hearing. An elderly man, thinking his wife was losing her hearing, went about 20 feet behind her and says, can you hear me, dear? No answer. He went five, five uh, feet, he went, got to within 10 feet and said, can you hear me, honey? No answer. So he got within five feet of her and said, can you hear me now? No answer. So he went right up to her ear and said, honey, can you hear me now? And she said, for the fourth time, yes. I can appreciate that because I now have hearing aids. My wife, you know, I thought my wife and I, I thought my wife were saying some really interesting things when really I was just hearing really, or, or not hearing really interesting things. And um, so I got hearing, and this is, a, this is a sidebar. Men, I'm talking to all the men who are 55 plus or 65 plus, if you need a hearing aid, please consider getting it because you're missing out on so much. When I take my hearing aids out, the world goes dull. When I put it in, it sharpens everything. They also have done studies where if you, if you need a hearing aid and you don't use one, that area of the brain is more prone for dementia. So that's a secondary reason to get hearing aids. So that's my sidebar. Here's a word of encouragement. Matthew 11:15 says this. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is Jesus speaking, right? See, the most important hearing that we have is not our physical ears. It's our spiritual ears. And that doesn't diminish over time. In fact, it can increase. See, that's where Jesus is greater than aging. Doesn't matter how well you hear with these two things. It's how you hear and hear the word of God and Jesus speaking to you. And then Jesus is indeed greater than aging. So there's a challenge of health loss, challenge of hearing loss. Then there's a challenge of memory loss, memory loss. The aged have what we term senior moments, where they forget things that maybe they really shouldn't have forgotten. And usually it's, it's, very, uh, it's very in a short time frame, short-term memory. Uh, there was a couple in their 90s who were having a hard time remembering things, so they went to the doctor. And the doctor gave really solid advice. Start writing things down, which is what I've started to do. Like I post it all over the place, right? Start writing it down. So later that night, they're watching TV, and the, and the elderly man got up and said, you know, I'm going to the kitchen to make something. You want anything? And the wife said, yeah, I'd like a bowl of ice cream. You think maybe you should write it down? I, said, I got that. Ice cream, bowl of ice cream. She said, well, and uh, can you add some strawberries on top of that? And he goes, and she said, oh, you know, maybe you should write that down. It's two things now. He said, I got it. Bowl of ice cream and strawberries. I said, and can you add a little bit of whipped cream? I said, maybe you should write that down. That's now three things. <laughs> Look, I got it. Bowl of ice cream, strawberries, and whipped cream. So off he goes to the kitchen for about 20 to 30 minutes. 
He comes out of the kitchen and hands his wife a tray of eggs and bacon. And she looks at him incredulously and says, where's my toast? I'll let that one sink in. Now, I usually don't tell jokes in messages. This is the one message where I sometimes tell jokes. And, you know, the jokes can be rather demeaning unless you're either elderly or unless you understand it is blessed to be aged. So if I offend anybody, I'm very sorry. But I like these jokes. And I can tell it, Greg Ma cannot tell these jokes. (laughs) Right? Doesn't sound right coming out of a young person's mouth. But I get this added measure of grace and and truth. Deuteronomy 6.12 says this, Then watch yourself that you do not forget the Lord who brought you from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. There's really only one thing God says he wants us to remember all the time. He says this repetitively in Deuteronomy especially. He says, remember, remember, remember. It's not about what you ate for breakfast or what you did last week necessarily, although it's good to remember those things. It's to remember him. Remember all the things God has done. And one of the things elderly people have, they have their long-term memory. They remember things 20 years ago rather and have difficulty remembering things 20 seconds ago. And what God wants is us to remember his goodness years ago, over, over the course of your life. Remember the Lord your God, he says. And when we do that, that's when Jesus is greater than aging. So there's a challenge of health loss, challenge of hearing loss, challenge of memory loss. There's also the challenge of people loss. People loss. Now, this is one of those areas that I think the family can be really supportive of grandparents and the elderly in your household. Because they're going to lose friends. And it's going to be really difficult. Friends at their own age. So empathize and sympathize with them, support them, and pray for them during a season when a good friend or family member passes away. I had the privilege of visiting John Wooden on a few occasions. And the last occasion was his 99th year, just months before he passed on to be with the Lord. And one of the things he lamented about, and not to any great degree, but it saddened him that he was the last of his generation. I mean, when you're 99, you're probably the last of your peer group, family and friends. And so he was really alone. And he, that's one of the things he kind of regretted a little bit. And I think his granddaughter or his great-granddaughter was actually living with him, taking care of him. And it's difficult. People lost one of the things that I dreaded as I grew older, and especially since I do funerals, is, is burying and, and officiating at a, at a friend or family member who was elderly, who has passed away. But here's the good news. Here's the good news. In the midst of our body decaying and people dying, we are being renewed daily. Renewed daily. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 and 17. I'm going to read verse 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. In fact, what a good study is. Go every place in the New Testament where the Bible says, do not lose heart. Read it and study it. But though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. Isn't that a wonderful promise? It's a wonderful truth. We are, be, even though we're maybe breaking down on the outside, inside, God renews us. And that's why we aren't to lose heart. See, if, if, we, if it was just the outer man is decaying, that'd be so depressing. But right after that, he said, but you're going to be renewed on a daily basis, even though bodily, you're not doing as well as you used to do. See, God wants to renew us and refresh us every day of our lives. He wants us to become more like Jesus, even though we are growing older. And that's when Jesus is greater than aging. Here are some ways of receiving God's renewing presence daily. I'm just going to mention these. Reading and studying the Bible daily. And there's a scripture reference for that. Praying on a continual basis Dwelling on the things above and not just the things below. Fellowshipping with Christians on a regular basis, like here at South Bay. These are things that we do on a daily basis. It helps us to be renewed day by day, and Jesus becomes greater than aging. So, for us who are elderly, we have the blessing of wearing a crown. 
And we have the blessing of being renewed on a daily basis. Thirdly, we have the blessing of being extremely valuable. And I really want you to hear this, both young and old alike. You have the blessing of being extremely valuable. Why? Well, first of all, the elder, the elderly are experienced. Proverbs 20, 29 this is a great verse. The glory of young men is their strength. The honor of old men is their gray hair. When we get older, we can't work harder, but we can work smarter. And that's what this verse is saying. Now, at the church that I, I was pastoring for the last, well, actually 42 years in total, uh, we, have, we, had a couple, we have a couple of hairdressers in the church. One cuts my hair, and she's a friend, uh, she's a family friend, uh, we do things with their family occasionally, my wife and I. And there's another gentleman who's really a good hairdresser. And I think that's the right terminology. Well, periodically he would come up to me at church and say, Pastor Court, let me dye your hair. And I never ever had a thought about dyeing my hair. All right. And he said, let me, let me dye your hair, please. I'll, I'll do it for free. I'm a ministry to you. All right. I said, well, um, let me think about it. So I thought about it. Now, on the screen will be a picture of me with gray hair. And now, a picture of me with black hair. <laughs> Are you laughing with me or at me? <laughs> See, I haven't seen these pictures. They show, here's a of me with blonde hair. That looks cool, huh? I don't want to look. All right, and here's a picture of me with pink hair. See, I didn't know what color he was going to use. Now, here's a slide with all four. But see, I couldn't wait for this passage to become a reality in my life. The honor of old men is what? Pink hair? Blonde hair? Black hair? Gray hair. I couldn't wait to get gray. See, young people have physical strength, probably more than they need, and that will ebb as they become elderly. Old people have honor in their gray hair because in their gray hair, it means you're aged, and with age comes wisdom through experience. Here's a Hasidic Jewish statement. For the learned, old age is winter. Right? That's, not a, that's not necessarily a good thing. Right? For the learned, it is a season of the harvest. So many of us are in the season of the harvest. You know, if we, if we learn about Jesus and if we learn through his word, we are in a season of harvest, not a season of winter. Job 12, 12 says this, wisdom is with aged men, with long life is understanding. And that is such a true statement. And I had the privilege of having dinner with John MacArthur a few years ago. And John MacArthur was turning 75. And the reason why I wanted to have dinner with him was because I wanted to know what it would be like to be a pastor in the 75 year of life. And I was planning on retiring at age 71. That was the plan. But I thought, well, in case I have to go to 75 and that's what the Lord wants, what does it look like? And so I asked him when he was going to retire. And you know what he said? He's not going to retire. So I asked him why. And in a very humble manner, a total humility, he said, well, because I know so much now. And what he's saying is over the years, he's acquired so much knowledge based on experience that a lot of being a pastor just comes second nature to him. And I understand that because I was in the ministry for 42 years. So there are things that I simply now know because I've been around for over seven decades. So here's an exhortation to all of you who are, who are 65 plus. Do not sell, sell short the wisdom you have gained over the years. Now, for all of you young people, all of you people who are under that age group, never, never sell short the wisdom you can get from people who are older. Access them. Talk to them. Now, you may hear some stories over and over. All right? That happens too. Right. But there are some pearls of wisdom from their lives that you need to mine out of them. And that only comes if you fellowship with them. 1 Peter 5, 5 says, you younger men likewise be subject to your, to your elders. Why? Because of the cumulative knowledge that the elders have over the course of their lifetime. And see, because of that, 
we know Jesus is greater than aging. See, the elderly are still productive. That's the second point. They're still productive. They're experienced and they're productive. Psalm 92 says this, verses 12 to 5. The righteous man will flourish like the palm tree. He will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still yield fruit in their old age. They shall be full of sap and very green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. See, the elderly can still bear fruit. It means they can still be productive. Every time you give advice to your grandchildren and helps them, you're being productive from the wisdom that you have acquired over the years. R.C. Sproul, pastor uh, and founder of Ligonier's Ministry, wrote this. When I last crossed a decade barrier in my own aging process, God was good enough to grant me this small bit of wisdom. The Bible honors age, not youth. I came to understand that the disappearance of my youth was something God thought was a good thing. And if I were wise, I would agree. Now, a decade later, and I've gotten, and I have been given this bit of wisdom, easier said than done. My calling as I grow older and my responsibilities grow isn't to take the mental vacation to that time when my responsibilities were few, nor is it to grow gray hairs, or in my case, lose hairs, worrying about those possibilities. Rather, I ought to do, I ought to do is long for, what I ought to do is long for, or better still, pray for, the maturity that rests in Christ in the midst of responsibilities. I need not to wish I were younger, but to pray I grow wiser. See, three things everyone needs to give to the Lord regardless of age. Time, talents, and treasures. And the elderly still have all three. And when they utilize it for the kingdom's sake, that's when Jesus is greater than aging. So the elderly are experienced, the elderly are still productive. Thirdly, the elderly teach us how to respect and honor. They serve a purpose by teaching the community of faith and others, what does it mean to respect and honor someone? Leviticus 19.32 says this, you shall rise up before the gray-headed and honor the aged, and you shall revere your, your God, I am the Lord. So before he tells them, revere me, for I am the Lord, make sure you honor and make sure you respect the aged. Now, what's the context of this verse? Well, people were listening to people other than the aged. They're they're consulting with with mediums and spiritists. And he says, don't do that. You have the elderly among you. Consult them. See, the Bible does honor the aged, not necessarily the young. And that is not where our society is at today. You know, SBCC, thank God, is a multi-generational church. All ages are here, which is really a blessing because many churches are monolithic in terms of age. We are not. And that is a blessing, especially if we interact and gain from one another. You see, the godly honor and respect the aged. The ungodly has no respect for the elderly. Deuteronomy 28, it's a very revealing verse, says this about an ungodly nation. It says, the nation of fierce continents who will have no respect for the old and show no favor or, sh- or nor show favor to the young. He's describing a godless nation. See, a godless nation is marked at least by two things in the verse. No respect for the old. It would be a culture that glorifies youthfulness and marginalizes the elderly. Sound familiar in the U.S. of A? Or, and, nor favor to the young. In our culture, we abort babies. So you can see where our country is slowly heading. We're becoming a godless nation. And it's up to churches like SBCC to share Jesus, to stem the tide of this growing unfaithfulness and ungodliness. 
So the elderly are experienced, they're still productive, and they teach us how to honor and respect. Fourthly, the elderly give us opportunities to show love and grace. To show love and grace. How? This is in 1 Timothy 5.4, it says, But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to practice piety in regard to their own family and to make some return to their parents, for this is acceptable in the sight of God. It's a very specific mandate. Children and grandchildren, make sure you take care of your parent slash grandparent. Now, there's an admonition to the other side, too, which I'm not going to get into this morning. See, the responsibility goes to children, to children and grandparents to take care of their elderly parent in some way, shape, or form. Now, in the verse, he, Paul uses the verb proton, which means first in priority, not in order. This is a priority issue. And what do you show when you do this? The Bible says you're showing your piety or it's acts of righteousness. See, I tell my grandsons periodically, when grandpa can't drive anymore, you're going to need to drive me around. Just don't drive too fast. All right? I'm actually preparing our grandkids that at some point in time, we're going to have a relationship that's going to change. I'm not driving you to Disneyland anymore. You're going to drive me and push me around in a wheelchair. Right? See, the Bible is very explicit in mandating us to take care of our household, which includes our parents. Now, there are some provisos in this. We're going to have a 4070 seminar here at SBC on October the 10th, and I'll be, I'll be sharing at that seminar. And it's really all about taking care of the elderly, because this is an issue in America today, and a lot of families are fragmenting over caring for parents. In the best of all worlds, both the adult child who's around 40 will come with their parent who's around 70. The 4070 rule, once again, is when the child is 40, the parent is 70, you should talk about end-of-life issues, which are very difficult to do. So I would like to give you a head start in this matter, or at least help you out. And there's more to learn beyond that. It's not going to be comprehensive, but it'll definitely help. So on, on October 10th, make your way here. Invite people that you know, especially the older population. And if we do what the scripture says in this area, that's when Jesus is greater than aging. In November of 2005, so this is 16 years ago, and I was thinking about my age. I was in my 50s at the time. And I thought, you know, I'm beyond halfway of my life. So I sat down, and what I started doing is writing reflections to give to my grandchildren, children and grandchildren, as a sort of a legacy. So this is one of the reflections I wrote. In fact, I'm writing devotionals now every day to them, except Sundays, since the pandemic began, to try to leave them a legacy of the things that I have learned over the years so that they can read them after I'm gone. So this is a reflection I wrote. And I wrote this really with my children in mind. It's entitled Beyond Halfway. Beyond halfway can be a very good thing. Beyond halfway done with an exam is encouraging. Beyond halfway home after a long trip is heartening. Beyond halfway finished with a home improvement project is progress. There are other times when beyond halfway can be far less than a good thing. Beyond halfway through vacation can be saddening. Beyond halfway, spending your allowance for the week can be painful. Beyond halfway in one's lifespan can be challenging at best, depressing at worst. I am beyond halfway in my life. I can see the home stretch from where I now live life. I have lived more than I shall live. I have experienced more than I shall experience. I have learned more than I shall learn. I have breathed more than I shall breathe. Beyond halfway, I have seen that over the course of one's lifespan, things change. Nothing stays the same. Life is dynamic. The old passes away and the new comes. The former becomes nostalgia and the latest becomes adventuresome. What was no longer is and what is won't last very long. The old becomes wistful and life becomes a string of events leading to a predictable conclusion. Beyond halfway, I've seen the passing of two generations of family and the advent of two new ones. Beyond halfway, I have felt the pain of losing a sibling. 
Beyond halfway, I've seen my precious daughters grow up and get married. Beyond halfway, I've seen the birth of grandchildren and the hope that comes with new life. Beyond halfway, I've seen changes in the culture. Cultural icons and social trend, trendsetters cease to exist. No more Walt Disney, no more Mr. Rogers, no more Elvis, no more Ronald Reagan, no more Mickey Mantle, no more Bob Hope, and the list goes on and on. Can it ever be, a, ever be good to be beyond halfway in one's life? How could it possibly be better to know that you will live less than you have lived? Beyond halfway could mean that your cup is almost half full or more than half empty. Beyond halfway could mean that the best is yet to come or that your finest hours are in the rearview mirror. Beyond halfway could mean your golden years are still ahead or that gilded years still await you. Is it better to be near the beginning or closer to the end? Is it more profitable to have experienced or to still experience? Is it better to live based on experience or experience based on living? As for me, I am thankful for the life that I have lived and look forward to the life I have yet to live. Beyond Halfway simply validates that life on earth is temp as a temporary sojourn at best, worthy of living to the fullest, but not so worthy to be counted as, that, as all that there is. As Paul wrote, therefore we do not lose heart, but though the outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. It all depends on your perspective, the way you look at things, the way you see life itself. I choose to see this life as temporary. The best is yet to come, not in this life, but in the one that is to come. However, beyond halfway also saddens me. Beyond halfway causes me to reminisce fondly about the past. Beyond halfway makes me love my family even more than ever. Beyond halfway causes me to daydream about the future of my beloved grandbabies. But thanks be to God that beyond halfway causes me to embrace the things that are really important in this life. Beyond Halfway helps me appreciate the things that make up today. Beyond Halfway allows me to savor the good things of life. Beyond Halfway allows me to see the majestic mountains, the cotton candy clouds, the sapphire sea, and the brightly shining stars of the night as though they had never existed before. And most importantly, Beyond Halfway inspires me regarding the life that is to come. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to experience life beyond halfway. And may I bring you glory and honor all the rest of my days. Amen. You know, one of the challenges of beyond halfway is nobody really knows when they are beyond halfway. Now, as we get my age, it's evident. But sometimes there are people who are much younger who are already beyond halfway because God is the one who has our lifespan in his hand and we don't know how long that's going to be. And so whether you're seven, whether you're 37 or 77, it's important to make peace with your God because you could be beyond halfway already. To confess Jesus as Savior and Lord, that he came down to die for your sins, that he rose from the grave and if you believe that, then you need to take another step if you haven't already and confess Jesus as Savior and Lord. And I'd like to give you an opportunity to do that this morning, whether you're here in the worship center, outdoor, under the tent, or at home, worshiping with us. So we're all going to bow our heads for prayer. And I'm going to actually ask those who would like to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior this morning, to do just that by repeating this prayer after me, making it your own. Let's pray. So if you would like to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord this morning, repeat this prayer, making it your own. The Lord will hear it and the Lord will honor it. He promises that. Here's the prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe you are God's son, that you died on a cross, that you rose from the grave. 
I am a sinner. I need you. I now ask you into my life as my Savior and Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Now close off that prayer with an amen. And if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. If you're here this morning, either in the worship center or, or out under the tent, if you make your way to the lobby after service, and there's a connect table, and we have a gift for you that'll help you start your journey of new life. If you're at home, you can click on in the chat box area, and there's a link there that'll direct you and connect you with us so that we can make connection with you and help you on your way to your new life in Christ. God's blessing upon each one of you. Amen.
Amen, church. One more time, let's give a loud shout and praise to the Lord our God who's worthy of all praise and honor. And would you also help me give a shout and praise to all the elderly and the grandparents among us. Let's honor them right now together. Woo. We thank you so much for joining us today. Everybody who's watching online or here at the church, um, if you are a grandparent and you are here with your family, we have a photo booth set up for you. We'd love to encourage you to go into the lobby. Maybe you're under the tent and you might want to come into the lobby as well where you can take a photo with your family. And if you're a grandparent, we do have a uh, gift for you. These are handmade uh, picture frames for you to put the picture in and you can take that home and put it up in your house somewhere. Um, maybe you're a grandparent and your family is not here. Maybe you don't have grandchildren here. Please do pick up a gift as well. These were made just for you, okay? So we want you to enjoy that. And like Pastor Corey said, we are a multi-generational church, and we thank the Lord for that, that you can come in and you see young, you see children, you see families, you see grandparents. But we don't just want to be a multi-generational church. We want to be a family, an intergenerational church, where it's not just young people over here, old people over there, Babies over here, kids over there. We want to be a church that functions like a family. So I want to encourage everybody, when you see uh, someone among us who are elderly, love them, greet them, say hi to them, give them a fist bump. They're not going to think you're weird, okay? Invite them out to lunch. Take them out to breakfast if they're comfortable with that. Some people may not be comfortable, but, but as Pastor Corey said, not just to love on them, but to glean from them the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge that God has poured into them throughout their lives. There's so much that we can gain uh, from those among us who God has given crowns of glory. So let's, let's do that as we go through this week. As we close, I also want to remind you, uh, if you're new, we welcome you, and we'd love for you to come to our Next Steps table. That's a place where you can pick up the gift that we have for you, and also just welcome you, let you know more about our church um, if you need prayer, we have prayer people at the Connect Station as well. They have a gray and yellow t-shirt that lets you know that they're there to hear you and to pray for you. All right? And with that, let's close this uh, service in prayer. Let's ask the Lord to lead us out from here. Father God, we thank you so much that you are our Heavenly Father. God, above all else, we look to you, we honor you, and praise you. But Lord, thank you so much that you've called us into your family. That through Christ, your son, you've allowed us to be part of your household. And God, I pray that we would really shine as, as, your, as your family. That we would go out into the world and let people see the love and the grace and the beauty and the majesty of our Father. And so, Lord, as we go from here, we ask that you would lead us out. God, you are our good shepherd. And we pray that you would go before us and that we would follow behind you. Would you also be our protector as you follow close behind us? And as we walk with your spirit, may we keep in step with, with your spirit every step of the way, every single day. And we pray this in Jesus' name. We all say amen. Amen. Have a great weekend, church.